and welcome to the Oddity Archive. Oddity Archive. Oddity Archive. Oddity. 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 Odd. Straight to the point, it entertains but educates to show all the people. Don't judge us by a past age. Knowledge reigns supreme over nearly everyone. Doesn't take a scientist to know where that came from. The And welcome to the Oddity Archive, the show that pays shameless lip service to your shallow personal fantasies, if the price is right. Well, we found our way to the end of another season. No! It's funny how my fans always sound just like me. I am my own biggest fan, so I guess it makes sense. Anyway, uh, it's the end of the season, and I thought we'd end this one with a topic that I've been wanting to do for quite some time, but until recently just didn't have enough material to, you know, make a whole episode out of. And so today we're going to be taking a look at that on-again, off-again, early 80s to late 90s trend of video magazines. Now, initially, when I was first kicking around this idea, I was thinking, oh, this is going to be one of those more overtly nostalgic, warm, fuzzy, friendly sort of episodes. And uh, as I was going through the candidates, once I finally found enough, I found that any nostalgia, especially on my part, was very badly misplaced. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a bit of a cringe fest and uh, a somewhat depressing one at that. I look for movies in the future for me. I want to play a cop. I do, you know, I like karate. I'm into karate. I've taken it, and I want to do movies. Not a Steven Seagal or anything, but I want to do something. There's a lot of, uh, shall we say, lost horizons on the docket today. Anyway. I guess today's first tape kind of unofficially qualifies as an installment of Oddity Archive After Dark. <coughs> anyway, I've had this particular series kicking around in the back of my head ever since the sneak preview preview guide episode, and no, I am not referring to Hot Body. I'm referring to that other video magazine referenced in there. Join the life. Ride along with us on the Easy Riders Marathon. You don't want to miss this part in U.S. Steel, Rowdy Rodeos, and more babes. Now, I kind of figured that Easy Riders was going to be a little on the white trashy side, but I had no inkling of just how truly, shall we say, classy it would be. There is exactly one informational article on the whole tape, and it's about how cool it is to get parts of your bike chromed. Uh, if it were me, I'd probably be more intent on trying to max out the performance or maybe trying to work my way to a better bike or something, but uh, I'm clearly not a biker. Anyway, uh, Aside from that, it's really just a whole lot of footage from biker rallies. And among that footage, it bounces back and forth between some especially embarrassing kind of home movies and what basically amounts to the Redneck Olympics. Get ready to twist the grip on all the tire smoking action of the Easy Riders Rodeo Grand Nationals in Lancaster, California. Our 
rodeo researchers made several innovative tests in search of the proper object. very exciting to take a look at the heritage that Excelsior and Henderson has. That's something that Dave and I are very proud of, of, of the heritage. Excelsior and Henderson motorcycles, they were in business, frankly, for 55 years. Last weekend alone, uh, I landed my trike upside down. Uh, that was a pretty tough break. People are proud of their machines when they roll them down the street, and there's nothing that shows off a bike better than chrome. Of course, it was all part of the Easy Rider's magic. Things aren't always the way they seem, you know. Wonder if they'll let us start these babies up. Bummer, oh bummer. It's gonna be a long hot summer. Hey, I can see just devils in the wind. And in the tire ride, Parts and his wife Melanie faced off against the new kids on the block. Melanie bounded back to sink the spud in the bucket first. Let's face it, everyone's blown plenty of paychecks to have their parts chromed. But what do you really get for all that money? A mouth-watering weenie bite. And Lori Gunya, a weenie bite record holder, took home first prize with a gullet gagging bite of five and a quarter inches. It has multi overhead uh, camshafts that operate multi valves with a center fired spark plug and uh, will be fired off by direct port fuel injection that will be monitored by a complete engine management system. Lost control and went to the roof. The hole in your ceiling is living through that what goes. For me personally, when I think of video magazines, the first thing that comes to mind is the more teeny bopperish sort of stuff. And, uh, well, I guess I'm not going to get away without taking a look at the most famous example of that. So, yeah, I got me some teen vid. And uh, unfortunately, I'm missing the little mini magazines that came with these, which it's not kind of redundant now that I think about it. But anyway, to the best of my knowledge, this is the complete Teen Vid series. I have found absolutely zero evidence of there ever being a volume three. And at $12.98 an issue in 1991 dollars, I can't say I'm too surprised. But uh, anyway, as you'd expect, this is a video version of, uh, I don't know, a 17 or Tiger Beat or something, and I don't know my teeny bopper rags. Uh, does Tiger Beat even still exist? Um, but anyway, I, we can definitely safely say that this is meant for preteen and teen girls, which is bad enough for me at my age and gender. Uh, but it makes it even worse when I remember that I was very much a mad magazine sort of kid. So this is just the polar opposite of my worldview back then. But anyway, when I was watching these two tapes, I found myself having the same thoughts over and over and over. And they were along the lines of, who? I don't remember this. I definitely don't remember that. But uh, after watching them, I did a little research, looked up a lot of the interviewees, and I think I can safely say that I'm not going to be alone here because a lot of the people seen in these tapes, their careers just never seem to quite take off. And uh, the stuff that I do remember, I found myself just kind of wishing that I had left it buried back in 1991 where it belongs. But uh, anyway, before we start, I want to point out volume two real quick here. Uh, the audio track on this tape is damaged, and I don't know why. The video is just fine, but uh, yeah, you're going to find out what's volume two and what was from volume one pretty easily. 
And uh, volume two, I found a bit distressing because it's just as much about the hangers on to the teen idols. And uh, then they were getting a little bolder with the advertising here. Uh, they still weren't coming right out and saying what they were trying to advertise. But there's this big, long pool party sequence, which was to sell bathing suits. But unfortunately, it uh, it comes perilously close to kitty porn. And then aside from that, what self-respecting teenager doesn't want to hear about the virtues of being a vegetarian? This is Teen Bit. Teen Bit. Teen Bit. Teen Bit. Teen Bit. Teen Bit. 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 Video Magazine. Hot energy. Teen Bit kicks on a swift tip of Video Magazine. Slamming, baby, ain't it? Viewing the latest stars and keeping at the videos. Clips of new shows and record steps. Good to go. I have a bunch of fish. I have uh, an African gray parrot. And I have a Conyer parrot. We're anxious to meet a lot of, you know, celebrities or, you know, whatever. Who do you want to meet that you haven't met yet? Michael Jackson. That's the number one, huh? Yeah, I want to meet him. Was he, like, a big role model of yours when you were growing up? Anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone want to be like Mike? Let's go shopping! I've got to have this. He's got him to make his move. But don't worry, girl. He got nothing to prove. He's thinking he's sweet, so slick and sly. Don't go and check him out. Just pass him by. You sit the end of days wondering what went wrong. Don't give him just a minute. He'll be back before long. He'll tell you what you want to hear. Whisper sweet things in your ear. Girl, just jump up with that. Tell him where it's at. Yo, VIP. Let's kick it. I'm Baba from Los Angeles. I'm out here on vacation, work vacation right now for Vanilla Ice's new movie, Cool as Ice. But he's got to do my, my wardrobe for my whole tour. <laughs> then he's going to do my trailer. I got I got on the back of my bus, I got a trailer that he's going to paint. It's a solid white trailer. He's going to paint, paint all of that. What he does comes from the streets. Uh, what I do comes from the streets. Just stay out of all of that stuff and stay straight. Keep a positive image about yourself and always remember that you can make it no matter where you're from, no matter what. We'd be on the street corner drinking 40-ounce bottles of Heffenreffa, and people don't understand that until we got this place and had this behind us. I mean, we could have been out there on the streets doing nothing with our lives, but we came up here, you know, and had a family. We're for real. These guys are for real. Now people see them in the, in the teen magazine. They may say, oh, they must be soft, man. They ain't real B-boys or whatever. These dudes are dogs, man. I mean, straight up... B-boys. I mean, you can't get no more B-boy than this place. We're five bad brothers from the Beantown land. No sound, so get the hell out. We do it our way. Who gives a damn about what critics say? Said we wouldn't last, said our time will pass. So we're just a fly. I'm not no wimp, and I'm not soft. I'm just a positive-minded person. They are John and Jordan Knight from the New Kids. When I go out with them and I'm doing shows, people say, can I? Can you sign an autograph? I say, did Box sign it? Did, did um... Did the mellow sign at first? I don't, just because I'm related to the new kids, I have my own group too, you know? And this record right here was made to show and prove that positivity is not about being soft, it's about being smart, you sucker. Peace. If you listened to my whole album and didn't see my face, you would say, oh, this kid, you know, he's probably from a rundown neighborhood and, uh, you know, had hard times, and, um, you know, he's just being truthful, you know what I'm saying? But if they were to see me, and they, oh, he's one of the new kid's brothers, they would say, oh, yeah, he's just a rich kid, and it's a bunch of bull. I have an album coming out, and um, I worked hard for it, though, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people will think, oh, his brother's rich and this and that, you know? He's just, you know what I'm saying, everything's been handed to him. When my album comes out, people are gonna get a big surprise. I'm Irish American and never would I pretend to be an African. You need a history lesson because you forgot where you came from. Dun, dun, dun. My album, you know, it, it doesn't say anything but how I am, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's basically all it says. It's just, you know, it's just me. When a white dude raps, the public sees it as a novelty. Even me. Although I take it seriously, some just like me because of my R-A-C-E. But I won't quit and I won't stop because I do hip-hop records just because I love hip-hop. See you later.
Hi, I'm Trent Dean. My philosophy of life, have a, just have a good time. Smile a lot. I have that song called Smile on the record. And I think that's a, that's a good thing to do. I mean, if you're feeling really bummed out, if you just look in the mirror and smile at yourself, it'll, it'll help. <laughs> if you are weaker, I will eat you. If you are smaller, I will feed you. Uh, the issue is very closely related to the environmental issue, to human rights, how we relate to the natural environment. I've sort of become the spokesperson for the vegetarian, I guess, facet of PETA, but certainly any, any, any uh, tangent or, or uh, any aspect. aspect of PETA or animal rights is a concern of mine. Well, my pet peeve is when people litter. Don't take 10 showers a day. Don't keep changing your outfit. I know my little sister does that all the time, and it drives me nuts. She changes her outfit like three or four times a day, and every outfit goes into the wash. And right there, that's a bunch of water down the drain, that's literally. A good point. So. I just think we should be really cautious, if I can get that right, of the water we use, how much water we use. Don't just like turn the water on to brush your teeth and you know waste so much water. Um, don't litter. BMG, which is part of Sony, uh, back in the early 90s was working with this now long defunct company called VPI and later VPI Harmony. And uh, VPI stands for Video Publications Industries. And they were responsible for TeenVid, but I think their big thing was the series of music-related video magazines that they were doing. So uh, among their titles were Slam and Rap, which uh, despite the title seems to be in favor of rap music, and uh, then there was Country Music Video Magazine, and Dance International, and most infamously, Metalhead. Now, I figured this was going to be as close to in my wheelhouse as I was going to get in this episode, but then I remembered that my history of heavy metal mostly ends around 1982, and this is from 1990, uh, so yeah, we're in definite hair metal territory. Now, on this tape, we're going to see some bands that I think have kind of rightly been forgotten, if they ever got all that well-known to begin with. And uh, there's some old 70s rockers that were going through that awkward little phase where they were trying to fit in and prove that they were still relevant amongst all the hair metal types. And then there were some otherwise decent bands that uh, just seemed to be having an off day, off week, off month, off year. Uh, like Megadeth turns in this really alarmingly stiff Alice Cooper cover. Uh, and then there's some bands that hadn't quite found their groove yet, like Guar. Um, this seems to have been about five minutes before it finally dawned on them that they had to, you know, actually try and write songs occasionally. Uh, and then there's this interview with Lita Ford on here, which does not discuss her music at all. In fact, it doesn't seem to discuss anything. Uh, and then, of course, this being the hair metal era, there's a pretty heaping helping of probably unintentional kind of spinal tap and decline of Western civilization part two sort of moments. <laughs> We're here out in front of Ricky Rackman's Bordello, the most happening club in LA in a really long time. It's really rocking. Wait in line, line starts back. How much does it cost? It's five bucks, dude. Okay? For you, you know Brandy Fox? Fifteen bucks. I think I see him now. Here he comes now. I think I can be a sumo wrestler and bring him down. Being in Japan is like coming home. I'm very like intrigued and fascinated by like the old Japan. Not just like, you know, like the samurai sorts and, and like the kung fu. But like just the really the, the shoguns, the whole way of living and the loyalty, and I got a lot of Japanese art at home. J 
Yeah, we could take off the makeup. I mean, basically, when we started, we started as a band. We started to play rock and roll, and that's what we could do. That's how we started, and we can keep doing that anytime we want. We could go back and play clubs. Without the makeup? I think you're nuts. And, uh, you know, heavy metal now is like, you know, um, sometimes, not all the time, but when I hear it the most and dislike it the most, it reminds me of masturbating. It's like, brrrr, and over. Uh, this is the first baby I've ever had, at least that I know of. Storytelling, really, to music. I mean, there's obviously uh, the, the, a different uh, side of, of life in the occult and mysticism and things like that, which is something that uh, the band has always dabbled in, if you like. Imagine these running up and down your back. I have no intention of calling it a day. I mean, this certainly isn't John aspiring to be an actor or John aspiring to be a politician, you know? I mean, all I'm doing is uh, taking it one day and one record at a time. Sometimes I think you drink just a little too much blood. I'm sorry, I'm going to PA. Bloodaholics Anonymous. Ah! <laughs> I want to rock and roll all night for the a party. A, a party every day, yeah. But only if I get my Kiss Me So Fan of the Park videotape. I gotta get it, I gotta have it, because I gotta learn how to go uh, with my tongue so I can get girlfriends like Gene Simmons says. He gets all the chicks, man. You know, it's tough being an adolescent. It's tough having your hormones and testosterone cranking over time. It's tough having to listen to this speed metal all day just to dispel your sexual angst written energy. And it's tough being in puberty. But come on, over next week. You gotta have these tapes. You gotta have these tapes. There's gonna be trouble. Someone's gonna have to die. <laughs> Metalhead. Today's last two videos are the first installments of what I believe to be the first ever stab at a video magazine. And it's Oddity Archive After Dark for realsies this time. So anyway, between 1982 and 84, Playboy put out six video editions of their magazine. Now, I haven't seen a standard paper edition of Playboy in a very, very long time. Uh, I, I was actually very much underage the last time I saw one. Uh, you know the deal. A, a couple of curious young boys stumble onto one of their dad's little stashes, and we just quick-thumbed through it and chucked it back in the drawer. But anyway, maybe my memory's just getting a little faulty at this point. But I remember all the nudity and just all the sex stuff being in the centerfold, center-ish part of the magazine. Otherwise, I remember it being kind of more like Time magazine in uh, that it's a lot of articles, interviews, uh, literary excerpts, political cartoons, that sort of stuff. But clearly the folks at Playboy were hip enough to know that no matter what they did, their videos were going to get stuck in the adult section. So I guess they figured, well, why fight it? In fact, why don't we just amp up that portion of our personality? Uh, and as such, the these videos seem a, a bit skewed. But anyway, here's the first edition. And uh, this one's on Betamax, by the way. 
but I've actually had this kicking around since the first season of Archive, and I've excerpted it a few times when it's pertinent to the subject matter. Um, but I've long wanted to do a full VHS vault style riff of parts of this video, but I just know I'm not going to get away with it. So uh, this is as good as it's ever going to get, unfortunately. And then I've got uh, volume two here on this uh, somewhat beaten up and rot-addled laser disc. And this is actually the more amusing of the two installments, uh, albeit for a lot of the wrong reasons. Uh, there's actually some downright tasteless stuff on here. But anyway, uh, quality control didn't seem to be in play quite as much for this one because the centerpiece of this video is about this lady, one Candy Loving, and she was their 25th anniversary uh, playmate in 78 or 79, and this was released more to coincide with their 30th anniversary. So what they did was they had some old footage lying around from four or five years earlier from some publicity stunt nation, you know, nationwide search sort of thing they were doing. And they just took that, plopped a new narration on it and just chucked it on this video. Uh, but on the other side of the coin, there's a pretty good interview with Dudley Moore on here. I really miss Dudley. <laughs> To begin with, an affectionate journey through three eventful decades of Playboy memories. My name is Lonnie Chin and I'm going to be a playmate for January 1983. My father is Jamaican and Chinese, and my mother is Swedish and British. I daydream of living like a little princess and having everything I want. But to me, that's a fantasy. You know, my biggest fantasy is to be a sex symbol. <laughs> a famous, famous sex symbol, not just a little sex symbol. I've always worked in retail. I've worked in retail since I was 17. I was working in a um, leather store, Netto Leathers, and I was a sales girl. Yes, I would. Okay, that's a 9.10. That's your size. Do you want to just step over to the mirror? I always wanted to own all the things in the store. You know, they have beautiful clothes. I love leather. I think it can be very sexy on a woman if she wears it right. I love it. It looks great. Thank you. You're more than welcome. John is tough and tells it straight, which we saw a bit of, especially when he was teaching Bo to ride. Making bad moves. Easy, slower than that. Jesus, you look like a sack of wheat. But why the anger and the temper tantrums? Well, I just get pissed off, and if I get pissed off yeah. uh, and don't believe something is right and everybody's saying, oh, it's all beautiful and lovely, I, I can't... But I'm that way, too. She's not crazy about you. No. I don't think so. She never has been. How um, embarrassed were you playing a nude scene opposite Bo Derek at the time? Oh, very. God, who wants to walk around showing everything? I mean, especially... I mean, I haven't got a body like the guy who played Tarzan in... I'm just saying close, but... <laughs> <laughs> I've got, you know... I've got all, he's got, you know, two nipples and a, and a wee wee. But um, that's about as far as it goes. No, it's very embarrassing. Some of the funniest things in the world to me are things that are from, from uh, large areas of pain. But I largely forget that side of it. I mean, I just feel that something is funny and I, and I go for it. I remember my father when he was uh, sitting up rather than lying down on his deathbed, just about to go into the, one of those marvellous comas that God, in his infinite mercy, has given us. And uh, 
He said to me, uh, don't let anything stand in your way. To find its silver anniversary playmate, Playboy launched the most massive search in its history. It was a national hunt to uncover a very special girl. Great shot. The people behind you are having such a terrific time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you think, Don? I think at least an eight, eh? Definitely an eight. She smiles, maybe we could move her up a notch. Nice long legs. Body's a little white, not much color. Well, relaxed. All right, let's stick with an eight then. My initial reaction is uh, how they look and then I take into consideration how they pose and whether they're very friendly or you know whether they seem nervous, whatnot. And then when the photographer points over to my window and there I'm smiling and waving, then she gives me an extra smile or a wink or something. I take the number down, put the next one up. I think you're seeing a new kind of woman these days. Women aren't afraid to be strong. They're swimming, pumping iron, getting in shape. They're the women of the 80s. Hi, I'm Cindy Simon, Playmate of the Month. I don't think my physique makes me any less feminine, and I wouldn't be interested in a man who thought so anyway. I feel good, I feel healthy, and I think that comes across. Four years ago, I weighed 120 pounds. Now that's what I bench press. Still, there's a part of me that will always be a little girl. I like that, and so does Walter. Playoffs. Here we go. There's Pam again for speed. She just keeps running. Okay. First pie in the air. Missy Cleveland seems to have the technique down. No She's problem. running fast. All right. Whoops. Pie's down. That oh, means no. she has to run all the way back, get another pie. Look at Victoria Cook just take off. Whoops. Well, she Most practically hands down again. the pie over the top. <laughs> oh, no, now Victoria Victoria bites the, she bites the cream, so to speak. <laughs> no dry skin problems here. Oh, that's for sure. Okay, this is Debbie Boostrom. This is a well-oiled machine. Yeah. And... Denise is taking a risk, too. She's upright like Karen Winner was. Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. See? That well, was the Once you're over, you're down. That's She's what they down. said. You don't want to become pregnant now, do you? Not right now, I don't. Good. Then roll them. Right. This film, Condom Sense, takes a light-hearted look at the how-tos of contraception. Ten years ago, it would have been banned as pornographic. Today, it's won important awards and is shown regularly in schools and libraries. One of the common uh, production tests which we use to evaluate our condoms is known as the inflation test. Uh, we measure the amount of uh, air that the condom will uh, hold prior to bursting. The condom is a very durable product and will inflate to a very large volume prior to it actually bursting. like these that I want everything to go smoothly without any interruption. That's why I have Digifram, the first high-tech digital diaphragm that operates by remote control. Scientifically designed by a TV repairman and a female gynecologist. Digifram, it works like magic. With rare exceptions, video magazines just never seem to be able to make it beyond a few issues. And uh, Easy Riders being a notable exception, I, I think that ran for 45 issues or something. But uh, anyway, this just does not surprise me in the slightest. I mean, when you stop to think about it at all, these things were just completely impractical. Uh, they were costly to make, they were time-consuming to make, uh, out of necessity they had to be costly to the consumer, and it just adds up to one of the all-time least surprising archivisms, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, anyway, that's it for today's archive. Join us next time when I reinvent myself as a uh, slightly belated and unlikely preteen idol, if only because YouTube seems to have been overrun by 11-year-olds. Moron, 
the nitro, let's make us one more round. A bit bummer, old bummer, it's gonna be a long hot summer. Hey, I can see just devils in the wind. A bit bummer, old bummer, I hear the sound of rolling thunder. Let's put it back together this time, I know we can win. a role model, sure, uh, but don't ask me to raise your kids.